Okay, hi there. Uh, welcome to a short video where we're going to take a few minutes to explore the topical issue of Brontier capitalism. So what is rent? Well, rent is one of the rewards, if you like, to factors of production. And typically, people associate rent with the income streams that flow from the ownership of land, the ownership of, of buildings. However, in a modern economy, and uh, using a broader definition of rent, we can identify many more ways in which rental income can flow from owning economic assets. So my definition of rent here is that rent is the income, the flow of income, derived from the ownership, possession or control of a scarce asset, and in particular under conditions of limited or limited or no competition. In other words, it's the return to having monopoly power. Now, we've mentioned the, uh, the the rental stream that comes from land. That is typically the one thing that people associate with with rent. Tesco, for example, owns many, many thousands of acres of land. So James Dyson, founder of, uh, of Dyson Vacuum Cleaners and other things, owns 33,000 acres. Several Oxford colleges own 14,000 acres of land. The ownership of land, of course, allows you to derive a ground rent to from tenants. But there are many other ways in which uh, rent can be generated in a modern economy. If you own financial assets, uh, you can generate interest and dividends and capital gains. If you own natural resources, uh, you can license those natural resources. You can lease the land or the resources for extractors and earn a, a rental income there. Uh, intellectual property is also very important in terms of, again, the licensing of a patent, perhaps in pharmaceuticals, or the licensing of a trademark, or the licensing of a product issued by uh, a software company such as Microsoft. Radio spectrum, of course, is quite important. That refers to a particular range of frequencies of electronic, electromagnetic energy. Uh, you can use those spectrums for various types of communication. And it's often likened, in fact, to owning land, particularly if you own virtual real estate. So the likes of Vodafone and Telefonica can, can license and not charge fees for the use of radio spectrums. And something that's becoming increasingly important is the growth, the rapid expansion of digital platform businesses. Classic examples would be things like Facebook, Airbnb, even the London Stock Exchange. They can generate rent from their assets, from ownership of digital platforms. And we'll have a separate video on the rise of digital platform businesses very shortly. And again, natural monopolies, if you own the infrastructure, but if Telecom may, may own its large parts of infrastructure, they can, again, charge for other firms to use that infrastructure. That's a form of rent. So what's the takeaway point from this slide? If you're taught that rent is the income from the ownership of land, I think you need to broaden and widen the conception of rental streams in a modern, dynamic, advanced economy. So what is rentier or rentier capitalism? Well, it describes the income from the private ownership of physical infrastructure, financial assets, intellectual properties we've just described. Uh, and it's become an important concept used in discussion about inequalities of income and wealth and about monopoly rents and about monopoly power in markets. It's also become important in the context of controversies over tax avoidance by big corporations, and the impact this has on governments uh, to generate the revenue to be able to pay for public services. So Rontier capitalism essentially describes a system often embedded in a capitalist society where individuals and businesses with market power can extract rent from everybody else, including those employed at an hourly wage. The economist uh, Christopher, in a book in 2020, has argued that since the beginning of 1980s, there has been a broad-based shift towards economic activities conducted by rentiers in the sense that they are structured around the control of and generation of income or rents from scarce assets. Uh, those, we talked about digital platform businesses, you know, the GAFAM businesses, GAFAM, Google, Amazon, Facebook, Apple and Microsoft. They seem to be doing particularly well despite the economic problems created by the coronavirus pandemic. Indeed, all but one of those GAFAM group of companies have posted double-digit revenue growth in the last three months. I was reading that uh, they, those GAFAM businesses together, you can see the market capitalization on this chart here, worth hundreds of billions of dollars. 
that generated a combined $34 billion profit in the second quarter of 2020 alone. How much of that is essentially rent from monopoly power? For some commentators, these, these increasing rents, otherwise known as supernormal profits, are the result of uh, a combination of, of globalisation and also the rising monopoly power of markets, of businesses in markets. So businesses have built their monopoly power. They might, for example, own huge digital platforms. And that lessening of competition increases monopoly power, leading to higher rents for shareholders, including senior executives. Writing recently in the Financial Times, Martin Wolf commented that superstar individuals and superstar companies earn monopoly rents because they can now serve global markets so cheaply. Let's link this to executive pay. Uh, the monopoly rents have, must, must clearly have contributed to the widening gap in pay and earnings between those of senior executives and average workers. In the UK, the ratio of the average CEO pay to that of average workers went up from 48 to 1 28, 22 years ago to 129 to 1 in 2016. It's even bigger in the United States. In his new book, uh, the French economist uh, Thomas Philippon argues that there's been an increase in the concentration ratio in many industries, uh, particularly in the United States. The United States markets have become less competitive. Concentration is high. Leaders are entrenched. Profit, profit rates are excessive. And this lack of competition has hurt US consumers. It's led to higher prices, lower investment, and perhaps a weakening of productivity growth. But Christopher, again mentioned recently, argues that Silicon Valley in the United States has gone from being the epicenter of innovation and competition to a hotbed of rentier capitalism. So there is clearly a groundswell of opinion amongst a certain group of economists that rentier capitalism is becoming a prominent feature of our economy, like an embedded characteristic of many modern advanced countries, including the United States and the UK. Uh, oftentimes, this, this form of rentier capitalism is reinforced by relatively weak or ineffective competition policy, perhaps including regulatory capture. We've seen a sub substantial increase in political lobbying, obviously in the United States, the world leader in lobbying, but in many other countries as well. I mean, lobbying works, and if it didn't, why would people pay for it? I was reading, uh, again, last week that Amazon and, and Google both have more lobbyists than there are sitting senators in the United States Congress. Volunteer capitalism can also be reinforced by the tolerance of a high level of corporate tax avoidance. And this, of course, is a big issue. How, how bad can we address this issue of corporate tax avoidance? Often it's legal. You find loopholes which, which cut your tax liabilities. Financial systems which provide cheap credit to corporates can reinforce that power. And so too can the, the power of employers in the labour market and in product markets, potentially squeezing the real wages paid to workers and the, the, the supply prices paid to businesses further down the supply chain. So one has asked the question, is this idea of volunteer capitalism becoming deeply embedded in capitalist societies. It's one of those really interesting topics, slightly off syllabus, that I think uh, would be interesting to read about, uh, particularly as we try to emerge, perhaps tentatively, from the pandemic and the ensuing economic crisis. Okay, thank you very much indeed.